What's up guys, Will Sterling again with Gutter Fighting Secrets. So it was my fifth and final day here at Battle School 2018, BC, Canada. As you can tell, I'm a little bit beat up, but I'm feeling good at this point. One more day to go. Hopefully I'll be able to walk away in one piece. But before I walk away, I wanted to sit down for an interview with Bill himself. Uh, this man is an extremely valuable resource for any of you out there in the martial arts community who are interested in authentic World War II hand-to-hand -hand combatives. How I really admire Fairburn's techniques, World War II combatives. Really, there's not come along another system that can be taught as rapidly and learn as rapidly and prove so effective. I mean, in World War II, it saved the lives of countless allied forces out there and proved just so highly effective against the Germans and Japanese that we were fighting. So with all that in mind, hey, let's sit down with Bill. We'll get something going here and I think you're gonna like it. So stand by. Hey, what's up guys? Will Sterling with Gutter Fighting Secrets again. I'm here with the man and the legend, Bill Wolf of Wolf's Combatives. We're just going to sit down for a quick interview with him. He agreed to take the time and give us a little information about Wolf's Combatives. Now, not only is uh, he teaching Wolf's Combatives, but this is kind of the unbroken lineage from Fairburn. And Bill, I know that you said you uh, were taught by Pat O'Neill, who learned directly from Fairburn. And I'm wondering if you can go into a little, a little bit about the lineage um, from Fairburn to Pat to ultimately to you. Okay, well, first off, I was not taught by Pat O'Neill. I was taught by a guy named Harold Starn and a guy named Jerry Wainwright. Now, Jerry Wainwright was taught by Pat O'Neill. Uh, Jerry Wainwright was a cover sergeant major in the PPCLI, and he was my own combat instructor when I was in the regular army. And he was a member of the First Special Service Force, who O'Neill was the uh, close combat instructor for, which is history. Bill, can you give us some background on yourself, um, your military history, your military career, and you know, you, I know that you're also a constable with the Canadian Police Force. Um, what's your background as far as uh, soldiering and stuff goes, man? Uh, basically, infantry. Uh, I was a member of the Prince Patricia Canadian Infantry, Seafort Highlanders, um, and uh, my rank was Chief Warrant Officer, which is Regimental Sergeant Major. Was the last appointment I had. So and the thing I, I personally like about this system, man, is um, you know, you're teaching guys and the stuff that you're teaching us is you've more or less been there and done it, so you know it's effective, you know it's combat effective, and you know it works. Um, yeah, that's true. Well, that's police work. Uh, I mean, in the military, you don't get a lot of close combat uh, on the battlefield uh, unless you're at war. I mean, uh, operationally, I've been challenged uh, using this stuff, but as, in police work on a daily basis, you're actually using the, this stuff. Not in the military sense of killing the enemy, but the sense of defending yourself, taking people under control. And the people you're dealing with are violent people who have victimized uh, civilians. You show up in the scene, they don't want to go to jail, so they become a testing ground for your skill and knowledge. You were telling us earlier about you know some of the stories from your police days and all that, and uh, it seems like you've really gotten the chance to, like you said, kind of battle test a lot of these techniques. Yeah, and that, yeah, that's true. But. Uh, you know, the nice thing about this system and what we pass on lineage-wise is that the guys who taught me were the heroes, the men who created the legend. So, I mean, if you look at 1st Special Service Force, 1st Canadian Parachute Battalion, uh, Canadian Commando Brigade, SOE, which are as our lineage, and guys like Pat O'Neill, who goes all the way back to Shanghai, uh, these guys proved it works. They taught me. Uh, these are guys you would not mess with. and. Uh, I've used it, it saved my bacon on more few occasions, and what I've given you guys is basically the nuts and bolts of what they taught us. And I think that's, again, cool because, you know, Fairburn definitely was a police, uh, police guy before he got into uh, teaching soldiers unarmed combat. So it seems to me like 
the police force is really kind of a proving ground for a lot of this martial arts stuff that we get taught here. Yeah, it is, uh, depending on the level of training. It, it works poorly, it's double edged sword. It either proves it works or proves it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. My experience of late is they've kind of forgotten Fairburn's uh, concepts and training, the simplicity of that training, the unpolitical correctness of it, and they've gone into a lot of very sports based training and it's failed. So, I mean, most emails I get from police agency is how do you fix the problem? Same as with the military, how do you fix the problem? And of course, the, the answer is training, but it's also a very harder form of training, like what you experienced, than what people are actually given because the street is violent. And yeah. violence, you know, you can't defeat violence by political correctness. It has to be, you have, your member has to know how to deal with it. And uh, unless he's schooled in that system, he, they fail. And, most police training is failing on the road, so uh, it's not Fairburn stuff anymore, it's something else. Something else, and I think that's the problem, and you know, I actually just sat down with an interview with someone else, uh, BJJ instructor, former MMA pro, MMA fighter, but he had the same concept, is that you can't have training that is uh, passive. It has to be force on force training. Um, I know you're, I mean, you're obviously pretty big uh, on force on force training. I'm walking away with some good souvenirs on my face here from the experience. Do you think that, I mean, MMA and whatnot is obviously a rough sport, but where do we draw the line between really training for combat and then training for sport? I mean, is there a line that you can draw? Uh, well, the first problem is you have to, the first problem with sports training is rules. So you have to shit can the rules. I mean, if I go into the American Army Combatives Training Center, they have rules on the wall. On the wall. I don't recall the Taliban or any of the people who are currently engaged with fighting by rules. So that has to go. Um, safety margins, what you're talking about, how far do you take it? And that is a problem. Um, you know, in my day as a young lad, uh, the safety <coughs> margin was, you know, whatever the instructor wanted it to be. Today, uh, there's policies and procedures that say how far you can take things, space safety officers and stuff like that. So real training gets kind of swept under the carpet for the fact of political correctness and or safety. Um, the biggest thing is rules. I mean, uh, what we have to start realizing is that, like what I showed you, is the raw material. When it comes to sports training, they take from what I taught you and they make it safe. Yeah. So you have to go back to the original cut. And you, you can't learn this stuff without getting knocked around and bashed around and doing your face. I mean, you've been training for a while, who the fuck taught you to block? Who taught you to move? Well, clearly yeah. they didn't teach you any of that yeah. shit. So, um, you know, you need to know how to do the basic stuff very, very, very well, whether it be basic boxing, basic kickboxing, uh, jiu-jitsu, you know, whether it be Brazilian, Japanese, or Western, place wrestling. The problem is it's not based for war, it's not based for street. Mm -hmm. And you have to cut the bullshit. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. You're, you're good, man. But there's just too much bullshit in training. Yeah. And it, it trains too complicated, it's too uh, complex, uh, and there's no fucking rules on the street. So if you don't train people to fight with no rules, they lose. And that's what happened when you know, policemen are losing. Uh, I get emails all the time, how do you fix the problem? Well, you can't fix the problem when all this nonsense gets in the way. There's no military saying you can't fix stupid. Mm -hmm. And uh, most of the training today is beyond stupid. So. And I like the way that you have us, you know, you have us wear cups. Um, you say, you look, always just go ahead and strike them full force in that groin. I mean, don't be afraid. I know in other training, you know, Krav Maga and whatnot, <coughs> um, you're doing a lot of simulated strikes to the groin and whatnot, but it really gives you that muscle memory to go ahead, no, 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 full force into that groin. Uh, don't be afraid to tag your partner with a closed fist. There's a lot of safety rules out there in today's soft kind of society that we're not really getting the full deal. I know you said when you were in uh, the instructor's training for the Canadian military unarmed program that you guys always trained with real knives, never with rubber knives. Yeah. And that's just necessary to get over that fear of the blade. Yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, you guys, well, I mean, you know, I watch you, you're training to miss. So when you do the other shit, you don't kick the balls, you don't go for the target, you're mm -hmm. training to miss. So these same analogies, when you teach some of the people to shoot with a pistol, you know, are you training to hit the center of mass or are you training to miss? You know, and the same concept there is, you know, like paper targets don't shoot back. Yeah. But training, that becomes the get, begin all and end all of weapons training, but it's not realistic. Mm -hmm. So the same thing applies to what we, we do in hand hand combat. It's got to be realistic. And, you know, you got to take the eyes, you got to take the balls. And if you don't practice hitting that target acquisition, you ain't going to get it on the street. You can't do it in training, mm -hmm. you can do it on the street, period. So, 
what made these guys in World War II so gosh damn tough, man? Like these guys went into combat and they just they killed Germans and Japs like it was like it was nothing, and they they won the war for us. Is that what made their indomitable fighting spirit so hard that they just beat the crap out of each other in training, and therefore they knew how to do it when they went in? Yeah, it's, it's training. If you look at the First Special Service Force, which is a Canadian U.S. command unit. Their training, physical training, was at the higher end. I mean, I've uh, had the privilege to know most of those men as my NCOs and officers. Uh, we did a TV show a few years ago, a documentary, and recreated that training, put real Canadian soldiers, real American soldiers through it, and it was the hardest thing they ever done. And these guys were Green Berets, Rangers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, it, it, their tr physical training is the upper level of fitness. Uh, and when you look at the pictures, and there's no muscle-bound guys. Yeah, yeah. They're all slim trim. But also, when you look at what O'Neill taught them, it was no nonsense, period. And you just don't get it. So, we see on, you know, YouTube and whatnot, those old black and white clips of Fairburn training, you know, with the masks on and all that. Mm -hmm. It seems like a lot of very simplified techniques. But you were saying that actually the full Defendo system, if I have the right term, it was Defendo that he was teaching? Defend you. Defend you. Um, so this system, Defend You, what he was teaching, is a lot more than what we can glimpse off of these old black and white films. It's not that simplified. Well, most of the stuff you see in those old deals are propaganda. You know, and, you know the stuff that Fairburn taught SOE or OSS or, you know, when he taught us, the force was highly classified material. So they gave snippets of it, like get tough, the man looks uh, in gutter fighting and all that stuff. They were propaganda tools. And the idea is, here's civilians, you learn this, you're, if the Hun or the, the Jap attacks you, you're going to be in defense, you know, you'll be able to defend yourself. So it's a snippet. And, but the problem is, guys think that's the whole system. Yeah. And most of those guys who say that are guys who never served in the military, they're never exposed to the training. And, you know, they're not even historians, they're just a bunch of idiots who read a book and yeah. now they think they know it. Yeah. yeah. So, basically what you're saying is that there are systems out there, and I've seen it, and we've all seen it, guys who claim to be teaching either gutter fighting or defendo, defend you, whatever, this is all Fairburn stuff. How many guys are there out there right now who really know the system? I haven't met any. You? Uh, one. Who's that? You. You, sir. Oh. Yeah. I've only met one so far in my time that teaches the pure water, um, authentic, defend you, gutter fighting system. And we're sitting down with him right now, so I'm going to pick your brain about it if you don't mind, though. Um, so, Bill, I've noticed that um, these old guys, right? You see the shows like Camp X and all of the all of these shows, and they'll pick up a machine gun and whatnot, and they'll be able to still do these actions. And I've read books about uh, former S uh, SOE guys or whatever, and they are um, they're talking about how they can still execute these uh, techniques uh, with the knife and everything at like 80 years old. What is it about the way that they were trained um, that they can still do these techniques even in old old age? Well, what training did you just go through? So basically, what you're saying is you do it enough times, it's repetition, it's getting the crap beat out of you, and that just ingrains it in you. Yeah, but also it's the, it's the concept of the technical <coughs> application of force. So, you know, you can't do this and, and not take the knocks and that, but it's also getting rid of the mental barriers to using it. Mm -hmm. And also you have to realize that that World War II phase was a different time in our history. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not the same society. You know, you're not the same guy as your grandfather, the great grandfather, who may have fought in World War II. Yeah. You're not the same guy that served in the military that, like me in the 60s. Yeah. And that, and you're just not. It's a different, Canadians are a different generation. It's not the same people. Mm -hmm. And the attitudes are different. We, I didn't grow up with political correctness, hence what you already found out. Uh, you know, we say what we think, we do what we think, and we act as we think, but you people don't. You're worried about higher, as the military says, uh, you worry about what people are going to think about what you say. Us all first don't give a shit. But, you know, our training says to us, okay, we can walk in peace. You know, you deny my lawful right to walk away, it becomes the worst day of your life. And that's how the old guys were. You know, they were hard. And, you know, it's only, hard's only popular if you watch a Jason Bourne movie. Right. And uh, you guys just don't want to put the sweat out, not you. 
but most of your viewers just don't want to put the sweat equity in to fucking learn this shit, nor are they willing to take the bumps and bruises. I mean, they don't want your, their face looking like your face. And I think that that's a, a big thing I always talk about is a lot of guys, I mean, Bill, a lot of guys can't get out to Canada or, you know, I know you work a lot in Europe as well um, to come and see you necessarily. So I always kind of say, look, if you can train in MMA and take those full blows to the face or something, that's good and it's way better than nothing. However, um, it is still a sport and like you were saying, there are still rules. Now, do you think that you can train in a system like MMA and supplement it with something like Krav to kind of get <coughs> that taste of street fighting, the no rules type of thing? Or like, how do you think that we should go about training as hard and real as we can um, if we don't have access to, you know, the right type of, of training? Well, you want me to be nice. I want you to be you, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Well, then you better come train with me because you're fucked with doing anything else. But <laughs> that, you talk about crab, I mean, I mean, most of the crab I've seen is a joke. Yeah. Uh, sure. And most of the training today boils down to who's the person teaching you, what's his background, and where does he come from. Most of these guys, you know, sports guys, good sports guys, but they have no street experience. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like even the stuff that you guys are doing, which is sports based, it's easy to teach you. Yeah. So, you know, there's, there's a thing called tacky psyche. It says how you train is how you react. So you have to get training that's training you to react to it. Now, taking the school of hard knocks where it sports is better than doing stuff. Uh, but again, you know, the, and I, I've said this hundreds and thousands of times, there's so much bullshit out there yeah. that who knows anymore. And if people don't want to travel to train with expertise, you know, it's not my problem. But you know, you came all this way, all the guys come all this way, you know, we got kids in this course come from Japan for yeah. Christ's sake. Yeah. So all your viewers are sitting on their ass with th their, their thumbs stuck up, they're saying, well, I can't do it, then the excuse is reason for failure, so go train with that crap, my God, fucking guy, because we know how deadly the Israelis are. <laughs> when they fight a real army and, and win, then come fucking talk to me. See, see. So, all right, that was gonna, I was gonna ask you, what do you think about, you know, systems out there today, but I think we kind of answered that question then. All right. So, like, we talked about um, training really has to be non-cooperative mm -hmm. um, in order to be effective. And we, tra we talked also about training has to be hard. You have to be willing to take those hard knocks. Um, is there anything else, do you have any other advice out there to younger guys coming up in the martial arts or even the sports fighting that kind of think, hey, I want uh, more than just, you know, cage fighting, jujitsu, Muay Thai. Uh, what would you tell these guys as far as your advice to the younger generation of martial arts coming, martial artists coming out today? Depends what your definition of martial arts is. I mean, there's, that's a big, big span of people. I mean, if you're talking about reality-based training as we coined it 20 years ago, uh, you need to know what the street is. And the biggest drama is most martial arts training, whether it be sports-based or traditional-based, has no touch of reality. Mm -hmm. And many s styles are keeping some sort of ridiculous lineage or tradition that didn't exist 600 years ago, but Hollywood's created this nonsense, uh, and the training's just totally ineffectual. I mean, it, it, but it's fun to do, don't get me wrong, it's fun to do. But, uh, you know, sports training is good sports training, but it's really, really well orchestrated. Um, I see a lot of so-called guys are sports trainers, but they're just rolling around on the ground. They're not really doing anything. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, if you're talking about combative-based training in the, in the context of what I believe, there's most of the stuff is just not, you know, the, as I say, the rubber's not meeting the road. Uh, but it's being passed off as such. Yeah. And the, you know, the, the buyer, the end user doesn't know the difference. I mean, you open a school and you mm -hmm. throw in all these credentials. Like most of the guys I meet who say they teach military-based training, almost 90% of them, or more, you know, more than that, 95% of them never served in the military. Yeah. So how the fuck, excuse my French, know anything about the military? I, I mean, I get these jacket wearers who are police experts and military experts, yet they've never served. So, where do they get the expertise? How all of a sudden, all of a sudden, do they become more knowledgeable, more experienced than just the basic patrol officer who's out there every day putting his life on the line? All of a sudden, this guy's got a black belt, knows more about this, and they create a resume, which is 
based on the bullshit, mm -hmm. and they create systems that are based <coughs> on the bullshit. There's no performance adjusted, validation objectives. It's never been validated in combat or on the street, but they're good at selling fridges to Eskimos. Mm -hmm. And martial arts today, compared to when I was a young lad in the 60s, the training's not, you know, basics are basics. And I don't see young guys who have good basics. And you know, whether it be basic boxing, basic judo, basic whatever, their, their training is, it's theatrical at best. And that's being passed off as self-defense. It's not. So the Goshen aspect of judo is lost. Hmm. You know? And what do you do? So, I mean, for the end user who wants training, you have to really search hard to find it, as you know. You have so. to search hard and you have to be willing to go and seek it out. I mean, bottom line. Uh, now, for our viewers who don't know, and this is going to include me, the Goshen theory of judo, what is that? Goshen is just a Japanese word, it means self defense. Self defense. Okay. The Goshen aspects of jiu jitsu. Goshen jiu jitsu. Goshen jiu jitsu. So, okay. uh, if I have time. Cool. <laughs> so, um, there really is no like secret Navy SEAL, secret special forces training that these guys receive. It's all kind of very similar to what we've gone through the past five days, get his eyes, get his groin, fight it out with him. Or is there like a secret like SCARS program that the Navy SEALs get or like a secret, you know, break his neck school of the Green Berets or something like that? Are you trying to get me hate mail, aren't you? Not trying, not trying to do a thing, Bill, but I'm simply asking for, because I've seen it out there on YouTube where, you know, guys will claim, I teach, you know, Green Berets exact uh, proportions how to break a neck or blah, 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 blah. I mean, bullshit or not? Well, you tell me. I'm going to go ahead and say that probably is, but, I mean, you're the expert here, man. Well, if you look at the average U.S. soldier, if you want to get about 1.5 hours of a combatist training per month, provided his SEAL likes combatist training. So basically, that's combat non-effective. I've never seen a program, a formal program in the Navy SEALs. And I know lots of SEALs. The guys in SEAL teams who treat, teach the hand-to-hand -hand combat are guys who are guys like myself, mm -hmm. who've had a lifelong interest in martial arts, they've got operational experience, and they get tasked with teaching it. Same as the SAS. There's no formal program in the British Army. It's guys that are within the SAS who have the background. They create something and they show their mates. Uh, most, you know, the formal programs, the Marine Corps program, uh, is so complicated, it's almost end user ridiculous. So, uh, modern army combatics programs failed in combat. But in order to make modifications to it, uh, that will bring it more in line with World War II combatives if they allow those modifications. And right now, everybody's manning the wall to protect the system that's failed. Mm. So, you know, uh, is there formal programs? No. Should there be formal programs? Yes. Because as a soldier, a police officer, your training has to be court defensible. And if I train you as a police officer, and what I teach you cannot go before a court of law and be scrutinized, mm. then you're going to get your ass in the grass. Mm. Uh, like in the military, for example, a soldier is subject to war crimes. Hmm. So if your training is not meeting the rubber of the road, you know, worst case scenario, you can be charged with war crimes. Uh, but, you know, as far as a formal program goes, that is validated, no. But modern combat is not, it's failed in combat, so it's not validated. And as you know, and most of you viewers would know, nothing's validated until it's used in combat yeah. or on the street. And almost all the shit fails, because I get 20, 10, 20, 30 emails a week from all different systems, and guys are trained, and all, it's failed them. Uh, you mentioned scars, it's the biggest joke on the planet. And anybody who's done it, anybody who's viewed it, unless you're a fucking idiot, <laughs> knows it's a joke. It's all about marketing, isn't it, man? Well, let's put it this way. I would love Jerry Peterson. He's the guy who forms scars. I want his ability to market. I want the Gracie's ability to market. Yeah. I don't have him, nor do I give a flying fuck. All right? If, if, you know, if you're not willing to put your ass out there and train hard, you're not going to get it. And yeah. bullshit baffles brains, and you got to be prepared to call bullshit, especially if you're on the line. Most people aren't. They'll buy into it because they're lazy. They're lazy mentally, physically, and tactically. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're not. You came here to get your shit kicked. Yeah. And, you know, but then again, you have to look at all the training you've done. Did it prepare you for what you did here? And that's another thing is all this sports, sports based training and whatnot. While it is helpful, once you've got someone going for your eyes, punching you in the groin as hard as they can, throwing you on the ground and kicking you with their boots, it 
it's not the same. It's just not the same. Uh, Bill's got a good saying, keep it simple, stupid. What was the other one, the KISS acronym? Keep it simple and savage. Simple and savage. And so if I'm understanding correctly, Bill, that's kind of your whole thing is simplify it. Train repetitions, repetitions, repetitions. And be physically fit to be able to perform. Yeah. Last question, man. How can guys get in touch with you if they want to come train? <coughs> Just go to whwolf.com. Whwolf.com. Bill, thank you so much. You. It's been an honor, dude. Guys and gals, it's time you started getting a little dirtier. Okay, grab some hair, grab something, but you're just putting a tag on the pads. You know, give yourself permission to train a little hard, a little more realistic, a hard, a little more realistic, a hard, a little more realistic, a hard, a little more realistic. You gotta start thinking about taking care of business now, or you're not gonna do it in the real world either. I'm ready! Hey! Go!